Gather the example, the late affixed moment. I am the hunter of divination, the divided stretch of time, sought for and found stitched with an ephemeral means. I have served the coastline of the Bow Eastern. From when is then? Then too was now I have found these moments to suffice to exemplify our call to the Cocrescence. All is still. A moment. Quiet amongst humming drummed beasts and bug symphonies unified in montage orations of song and wilderness palaver. Such the unbroken splendor of stepping stones is this. There the girl reflects, expected, peace. A calm about the forest, sighs smiling into lotus sat, relaxing. Chimera crawls, cat form with antlers, donning a possum tail curled around their paw, stretching out to puddle in her lap. For a moment they rested, a moment rising, free, falling, meditative, rhythm, unfettered, stillness drawn to a closed, absolute chill when the sound began, unbearable, unmistakable, stompy, creepy, crepitating, stomp, louder, stomp, closer, stomp. Zero! The girl huffed a noise. You're so fucking loud! Zero stomp at all, claws up, mouth dropped, squawks and roars, Chimera now roused a feathered crown of blue, opening eyes, blinking into waves, stopped, sniffed. The human seat of intellect, Chimera chattered, is within the heart, and some humans knew this. So upon death, they placed it before the foot of truth and justice. Zero took seat, engaging, listening. Chimera shuffled their head into crocodile beak, a sight for such a small creature. They hissed. So upon death, lungs, liver, stomach, and guts, all organs placed to rest, dormant and four bellies carved to jars, gorked by the heads of their son's four spirits. Chimera's body plumps into hippopotamus hairlessness, stumping legs beneath such weight they snapped. The same humans in the brain to be the seat of irrelevance, and so upon death placed it in the courage. Chimera's hair hackling across their back, down their arms, unshuffling into lion's paw, they growled. So upon death, the brain rests in the dormancy of dumpsters, useless and slumped, a fall tossed. Zero dropped to all fours and began snapping and jumping about like a crocodile. Their hearts weighed the weight of eons, and so I ate them, with no amount of conveyed fullness. Chimera lowered their head and began to cry. Zero sits back, belly pushed out, eyes crossed, his lips and cheeks full of held puckered air, his best hippopotamus. It's okay, dear. I ate once the hearts of eight bison in a single setting. I stretched each of them across my shoulders and fixed them to grammar. Chimera's mane migrates down the chin of a crocodile grin as crescent horns began to curl, growing from above their eyes. The girl placed her hand, palm open against their snout, gently following it towards the front of Chimera's forming skull. I meant only to preserve them in ink, the girl continued. Instead, my own skin was stretched with theirs across the hollow trunk of a baobab tree. We beat the music back into each other like drums. The girl standing now before Chimera in full bison form. The thing is, she whispered, I loved every second of it. 
the vibrations of the beat reverberate, pounding, vibrato, pa 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 pouncing, each bone lifted and strike, pa 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 pounding into the drum I'd become, the girl said, bowing her head. My dear, enlighten me, so that I too may know the wave of my own heart. Chimera, hold me against the ripping of my own horizons. There, in this graceful moment of transference, a shared preciousness growing intertwined, their concrescence begins. <laughs>